Verse number 22, we begin with the actual message that Paul preached on Mars Hill. But uh, begin reading in, in Acts chapter 17, verse number 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything. See, yet seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, or to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day into which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and hath raised him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, albeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. And so that's reading 22 down through verse number 34. And, uh, we notice here in, in verse number 22 that uh, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive, then all, that in all things ye are too superstitious. Now when Paul uses that word superstitious, he's not talking about like what we think today of how that uh, if, if, if we're going somewhere, walking uh, down a path or something, and the black cat crosses our path, it's bad luck, and we turn around and go another way. Or maybe if you accidentally kill a spider, you take some, a pinch of salt and throw it over your shoulder, or maybe if you break a mirror that it's seven years bad luck, that's superstition, but that's not the kind of superstition that Paul was talking about. What Paul was talking about, he had, he had been there, he had been looking around at this period of time that he was waiting for his companions, the men that had been working with him uh, in other cities, at Thessalonica and, and, and other places, and uh, he was waiting for them to come and meet him, and he began to look around and see that the, the whole city was given to idolatry. So when Paul uh, uses the word superstition here, he's telling them, I see that you're too religious. He's talking about, my beloved, amen, religion, not some kind of little superstition about some kind of bad luck. That's the kind of superstition that Paul is talking about. And we uh, preached this morning on how that uh, Paul, uh, uh, beloved, that he uh, uh, that he disputed. That is, he argued uh, with the Jews and with the devout persons and 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 uh, uh, with, the, with those that he met in the in the marketplace. That is, the pagans that he met. He argued with them and disputed with them about their false religion. And we uh, quoted to you this morning, my beloved friend, how that. Uh, David said in Psalms 119, 104, then again in 119, 119, he said, I hate every false way. And so Paul was speaking out, my beloved, against false religion and standing against false religion. And you know it's sad. There's many that are meeting today that met this morning, some of them still uh, meeting again this evening throughout this land and country in, in churches, my beloved, that have rejected the truth of God's Word, that have rejected Bible doctrine, that have rejected the, uh, the, the truth of the Word of God, the true Gospel, and have gone off into liberalism and, and false beliefs, my beloved. And there's some churches where from the pulpit to the back pew, and from side to side, there may not be, probably ain't, a single person in that church. I'm talking about the churches that have departed from the truth that, 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 that not one person in that congregation is genuinely saved by the grace of God. There's a lot of them 
if they uh, uh, truly believe the tenets of the, of the, of the uh, denomination that they're in, they cannot be saved. There is only one way that we can be saved. It's only through and by the grace of God. The Bible tells us, amen, Titus 2 and 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that in our ungodliness and worldly loves, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And several times, at least three, and maybe four times in the Word of God, God has declared in both Old and New Testament that the just shall live by faith. We're saved by grace through faith plus nothing and minus nothing. And Paul stood there on Mars Hill and he told them, he said, You men of Athens, I perceive, I understand that in all things you're too superstitious. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, amen, that Paul rebuked superstition and false religion, and so does the Word of God. Jesus declared in Matthew 7 and 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Bloody friend, the, the Bible has declared that there is none other name under heaven, neither, talking about Jesus, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That is other than the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you, if people want to be saved by the grace of God, they're going to have to believe in the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible is not some mammy pammy Jesus that's going to, yeah, he'll accept people as they are, my beloved friend, but he'll change them if they genuinely believe on him to life everlasting. They'll not be the same. They'll not continue on in their sin. My beloved friend, the Jesus of the Bible is God manifest in flesh. Amen. Uh, again, the, the Word of God tells us, amen, the, the grave is a mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, uh, 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 believed on in the world, seen of angels, uh, amen, believed on in the world, received uh, in the glory. Thank God. Amen. If people are going to be saved, they're going to have to be saved by the Jesus of the Bible. If they're going to believe in Jesus, they're going to have to believe in the Jesus of the Bible. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, he, amen, he speaks against false religion. There's many, amen, Titus 1 and 16 said they profess to know God, but in works they deny Him, being to every good work reprobate. Then again, beloved friend, 1 John 2 and 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. I believe in the new birth, don't you? Amen. He said, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. If we have genuine saving faith, we genuinely put our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross of Calvary, that shed blood that was shed for us, and that glorious resurrection where he got up again. Thank God we will not be the same, amen, when we meet him. We'll be different. We'll be born again, amen. Amen. What a blessing that is. And, and it's not a separate thing, by the way, amen, but it's a, an integral part of saving faith. If, you, if we genuinely... Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be born again. We will be made a new creation in Christ. We will come repenting of our sin. Amen. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Amen. But he said, uh, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. There's a lot of people engaging in ignorant worship in this day and age that we're living in. They're not saved. They've never been born again. All they've got is religion, my beloved friend. In a lot of cases, they and they name the name of Christ, but in a lot of cases, they've replace the new birth and, 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 and 
that genuine faith with the with the works of men and uh, doing good unto others, and, and, and we ought to be. Uh, we ought to be good unto others. We ought to be kind. Amen. We ought to be gentle. And uh, we ought to uh, uh, help the needy when, as we have opportunity. Amen. Uh, scripture said, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially they of the household of faith. So we're supposed to do that. But it won't get you anywhere with God. It won't get you any points with God. Amen. You have to be saved by the grace of God. You must be born again. You must put your faith and your trust in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And in a lot of church, modernistic churches today, they have replaced, amen, a, a, a genuine walk with Christ with things like uh, 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 social good and social justice and, and environmentalism and things of that nature. And they get up and talk about uh, uh, stewardship of the earth and different. And we ought to be good stewards of the earth. Stewards of the earth, Amen. God gave man charge over the earth, and we ought to take care of the earth. We ought not abuse it, but we ought not go crazy with it either. But he he said that uh, uh, he said as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. And therefore, ye ignorantly worship Him. Declare I unto you. And I want you to notice, beloved, verses uh, 24 through 29, and a few things we may say about that. But uh, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing, notice this, he giveth to all life and bread and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art man's device. You notice here that he said we are his offspring. Now Paul is not talking about the brotherhood of man that a lot of people believe in, that, uh, that, that, uh, that everybody is children of God spiritually. But the, the, uh, referring to God as, 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 as our father there, he's talking about God as creator. And we notice here that we and we and we many many times uh, quote it, uh, beloved. That he he tells us here in verse number twenty eight. For in him we live and move and have our being. We uh, quoted it this morning, Exodus twenty and eleven. That he declared for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, uh, uh, the sea and all that in them is. Then again, in, in Nehemiah 9 and 6, he said, Thou, even thou, O Lord, alone, thou hast made, uh, art, Lord, art Lord alone, and hast, thou hast made heaven and earth and all things therein, and thou preservest them all. God's the one who made everything and made everybody. I'm talking about Jehovah God, the one true and living God. And Paul was telling them, these other gods that you're worshiping, they're not God. My God has declared, I am God alone. And beside me, there is none other. And I want to tell you, my beloved friend, as I, as I pointed out there, Paul told them, said, I perceive that you're too superstitious. He's talking about their worship of their idol gods. And I want to declare this morning that, or tonight that when the, when the uh, Islamist walks in, whether he does it at home or he walks in to whatever they call their holy places that they get, the mosque, amen, and they spread their prayer rug down and they prostrate themselves. And they bow down and they pray to Allah. It's not getting above their head. They're practicing superstition. They're practicing false religion. The Buddhist and the Hindu. When they pray to their many idol gods, and the Hindu, or the Buddhist rather, as I've said before, spins that prayer wheel. And when the Catholic goes into that little booth and, and he, he or she handles those beads, or the Hindu, 
handles those beads, and by the way, that's where the Catholics got it. They got it from idolatry. Uh, Hindus have what, uh, the same thing. They call it something else. But they have the same thing that the Catholics call the rosary. And, uh, and, and, and reciting, my beloved friend, uh, the so-called Lord's Prayer or, or, or reciting so many Hail Marys, my beloved friend, all that they are doing is practicing vain superstition. And it'll get them nowhere. It'll get them nowhere. And they are convinced, my beloved, that at least in part that it takes works for them to be saved. How sad that is. They believe, and, and it's official church dogma and doctrine, the Catholic Church believes that it's faith plus works. And I want to tell you, honey, that ain't nothing but empty and vain superstition. And it'll get you nowhere with God. Thanks be unto God when you put your faith and trust in Him and the finished work of Calvary. Thank God. I, I'm talking about you believe on Him. The life everlasting, it'll get the job done. And it'll save you, thank God. And you can know that you're going to go to heaven one day after a while when you die. What a blessing that is. Then I want you to notice here what he said. I'm going to move as quickly as I can. And he, he tells them here, he said, for it's in Him. We live and move and have our being. Thank God. Amen. Everything that we are and everything that we have, everything that we possess, it comes from God. I know I've said that a lot, but it bears off repeating. Amen. Thank God. Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, and who is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Thank God. I'm glad that He giveth us all things richly to enjoy. What a blessing that is. And the sad thing about it is he sends his goodness to the lost as well as the saved. He said, the Bible tells us that he sends his rain upon the just and upon the unjust. And they never look up, my beloved, the vast majority never look up to see where their blessings are coming from. How sad that is. They never recognize the God of heaven in truth and reality, they never recognize the Lord Jesus Christ and how sad that is. Amen. And then he, he tells them, he said in verse number 30, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth he all men everywhere to repent. Amen. The Lord commands repentance. And you know, I've, I've had a lot of uh, criticism by Especially, I mean, I've, I've been attacked on uh, uh, YouTube and some of the comments, uh, principally by people who uh, are, are Calvinists, those that believe that you're uh, predestined either to heaven or hell before you're born. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they, uh, 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 they, they say that repentance is works. But I want to tell you, repentance is an integral part of salvation. And, and God commands repentance. And uh, Jesus told them there in one place, he said after uh, they were talking about how that uh, there were certain ones that uh, Pilate had, had mingled their uh, blood with their sacrifices. And, and there was an, an, another group that a tower had, had fell upon them and so on. And Jesus spake unto them and said, Suppose ye that these were sinners above all others, but I say unto you, Nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I want to tell you, repentance is a requirement from God. It's part of genuine saving faith. You'll never come to God except ye repent. And that is, my beloved, not only that you recognize that you're a sinner, not only that you're sorry for sin, but that you have a change of heart, you have a change of mind, that you're willing to forsake that sin. And the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 14 and 15, it said, After that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Repentance is a requirement, my beloved. Isaiah 55 and 7, he said, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, 
and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. Amen. There is a requirement for repentance. And we've made the statement before, and other preachers have, and it's the absolute truth. We'll never get anybody saved until we get him lost, get them lost. They're going to have to realize that they're a sinner in, the, in need of a Savior. You know the sad thing about that? That's a lot of what keeps people from being saved today. A lot of people just cannot see themselves as sinners. Now they can look at the other fellow or the other uh, 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 gal down the road and, and they can see how bad they are and they can recognize them as a sinner. But they are convinced that they themselves, that they're not so bad. And Satan comes to them and he tells them, he'll say, you're not so bad. Look, look, look at that person. Look what they're doing. Now, you've never killed anybody. You've never stolen anything. You're not a thief. You're not a drug addict. You're not this. You're not that. You'll be all right. There's no way that a just God would send you to hell. And he gives them a counterfeit and he turns them away from genuine salvation. He turns them away from repentance from recognition that they are a sinner in need of a Savior. And every one of us my beloved friend, in our atomic flesh, in our, in, our, in our nature, are sinners. Amen? Now, positionally, after we've been saved by the grace of God, we're not a sinner anymore. Amen? We're a saint. We're a child of God. Amen? We're, we're, we're children of the living God. We're a part of the bride of Christ, thank God. The body of Christ, the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. But still, we have that nature of sin. In and of ourselves, nobody, my beloved, can be saved. Amen. They must recognize their need of a Savior. And then there's a lot, my beloved, they just don't want to give up that sin. And really, that's, uh, uh, I've heard other, I, this is not original with me, but I believe it's true. I believe the reason that a lot of people turn off to atheism there's some kind of sin that they want to hold on to. And they don't want to give up. And if they recognize that there is a God, then they must recognize that that God created them. And that God has a right to set some rules. And if they break those rules to punish them, and that's why they don't want to acknowledge that there's a God because they're going to have to face their sin. They're going to have to do something with their sin. They don't want to do that. Amen. But he said the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth the all men everywhere to repent. That, that, that means no exception. All men everywhere means everybody. And uh, by the way, that's, uh, it, they may, he may be speaking about a, a pretty rough subject, but that's uh, another evidence of the many, many evidences in the Word of God that it's whosoever will, let him come and take a drink of the water of life freely. If God is going to require that all men everywhere repent, then he must also provide all men everywhere with the opportunity for salvation. And he has. Amen. He's declared in his word. He said, no man can come unto me except my father which sent me draw him. But he said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men. Unto me, what a blessed, blessed promise that is. And how sad it is that so many today reject that and refuse that. And truly, down through history, the vast majority have. But there was a very great minority, especially in this country, that were Christian at one time. Not so anymore. The genuine Christians, uh, few and far between. The, the genuine Bible-believing church, uh, they're few and they're far between. And I, I never will forget a few years, uh, just a year or so ago, I guess it was, uh, some person that had uh, been listening to my messages on, on, on YouTube, he, he, sent, he contacted me and he told me, he said, I want to tell you, I appreciate it. I, I thank God for it. He said, I appreciate the old time preaching. He, and he told me, I think he said to live somewhere in, I believe it's in northern Wisconsin, somewhere or some, some state, maybe it was Michigan or some state up north. He said where he was living, he said, I cannot find a fundamental 
Bible believing Baptist church. He said, I've not been able to find one. And you know, that's sad. Used to, they, I mean, they, they wasn't as many of them up north as they were in the south, but they, but they were there. But a lot of them has, has closed down. But he, he said, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth the all in everywhere to repent. Notice verse number 31. And he said that, uh, uh, he said, uh, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that hath raised him from the dead. Amen. He's appointed a day that he's going to judge. He's going to judge the world. He's going to judge the unsaved. And he's going to judge you and I as believers tonight. Amen. He's going to judge the unsaved. Job 11 and 20 he said, The eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be. My beloved friend, their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. What does the Bible say? The wages of sin is death. Psalms 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. All the nations that forget God. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Amen. Thank God he said the wages of sin is death, but gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be unto God that he gave me salvation. Amen. But the, the unsaved, this world is going to face judgment one of these days. Amen. We all know that the Bible tells us that uh, uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 20, John said, I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is called the book of life. And the dead were judged of the things contained in the books. And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into a lake which burnt with fine brimstone. This is the second death. The wicked think they're getting by right now. But one day they're going to pay, amen. Payday's coming. And they're going to face judgment, amen. And he shall judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, as he tells us here. Amen. But, beloved friend, he's not just going to judge the world. He's going to judge me, and he's going to judge you. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn over here and read this because it's much too long for me uh, to, to remember all of it, to quote it. But 1 Corinthians 3 Verses 11 through 15, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. Where other foundation can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward, but if, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You and I are going to stand before him, before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're not going to be there to be judged as to whether we're saved or whether they're lost. We're lost. Our sin was judged at Calvary. Amen. That, that bears repeating. He took the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank God our sins are gone. But we will stand before him. And we will be given account of, of, of what we've done. Amen. Of our stewardship. And you know, I shudder to think about that because I as a minister and these, these deacons, Sunday school teacher, amen, we're going to stand before God. And the Bible said that where little is given, little is required. But he said where much is given, much is required. And I personally believe that I as a minister of the gospel will have more to answer for than the average layman. I mean, remember what Paul said, Well, is unto me if I preach not the gospel? For a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Amen. But we're going to give an account. And the Bible tells us that 
that uh, uh, he's going to wipe off all tears from off all faces. And he's not got a reason to wipe tears away if there's not tears. And I believe that, it, that every one of us, my beloved, when, they, when we stand at the beam of sea, I think we'll have cause to weep. So maybe some of us more than others. Maybe there was an opportunity that we had to speak to somebody, but we didn't have time. Maybe we could have made a difference in somebody's life if we just said a few words to them about Jesus, but we didn't have time. Or maybe we were embarrassed, or maybe we just didn't trust the Lord to give us the words that we needed. And I want to tell you, you may think it's easier for me than it is for you, but it's just as hard for me as it is for you, amen, to start up a conversation with somebody and, and turn it to the Lord. It's not, it's, sometimes it's not easy. I understand that. But you know, we need to pray that the Lord give us opportunity and let Him give us that opportunity and open the door for us. And when we get that opportunity, however it comes, we need to talk to others about the Lord. Maybe there was times that we did what God said, but we didn't do it fully. Amen. We just maybe obeyed Him a little bit. Remember when God told Samuel, said, you tell Saul to go down and to take the children of Israel and go down and slay the sinners, the Amalekites, and destroy them and have no mercy on them. He said, destroy them utterly, everything. And uh, uh, Saul and the people went down and they attacked them and they destroyed them utterly except they saved the king of the Amalekites alive and the best of the sheep and of the cattle. And uh, it repented the Lord that he had made Saul king. And he sent Samuel down. And Samuel went down to him and he asked him, he said, why have you not obeyed the Lord? And, and Saul said, I obeyed the Lord. And he said, if, if you've obeyed the Lord, What's the bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen that I hear in my ears? And he said, well, we, we obeyed the Lord, we, but we, we destroyed it utterly. But we uh, 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 saved the king alive and we saved the best of the sheep and of the oxen and the sacrifice unto the Lord. But you see, that's not what God told them to do. Amen. And Samuel rebuked Saul and said, Amen. That uh, uh, that uh, rebellion is as the sin of iniquity and a, and a, a, a witchcraft. And he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, because you disobeyed the Lord, the kingdom is rent from you. You see, Saul was convinced he had obeyed the Lord, but he didn't obey him fully. Maybe there's been other times that we win and we did, but we didn't do it for the right reason. Amen. Bloody friend, those things are going to be wood, hay, and stubble. They're going to go up and smoke. But I hope and I trust that every one of us, my beloved, will win some sort of reward. Will win some crown. That we can take. That we can kneel down like those 24 elders in Revelation chapter 5. We can kneel down before the Son of God. We can cast those crowns before His feet. Well, I want to tell you, beloved friend, amen, judgment is going to come. Then I want to uh, look at just one more verse, and that would be verse number 34. And they was, uh, he, he tells us here, when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Remember, they had called him a babbler, and they had called him a setter forth, a strange doctor of the fool. So Paul departed from among them. Notice verse number 34. How be it, certain men clave unto him and believed. Among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. Amen. Some believe. I ended this morning the same way that I'm going to end tonight. There's many that in this day and age that are rejecting the message of Christ, the message of the cross of Christ. But we need to preach the gospel. We need to see to it that the gospel goes out. Because, beloved, somewhere along the way, there's many, 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 many may turn away from it. And 
And, and those that get saved may be far, few and far between. But some will believe. Remember Romans 1 and 16. Amen. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The power is in these words. And that's not just the preacher preaching. That's you and I as Christian people testifying of. Amen. And witnessing to others. Telling others about what Jesus has done for us. And you don't have to be some kind of scripture whiz to be able to do it. Amen. You can at least tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. You, you, can, you can tell them the simple gospel. Amen. That's simple enough for everybody to know. Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he declares in Romans chapter 10, the word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth, which is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There will be some that will believe. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4 and 12, he said, for the word of God is quick. That means it's alive and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the divine asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. This word that we have, it's got the power to save. And Paul walked out into that Roman world, Paul and the others, and uh, that that Greek world, and they were uh, they were given to superstition. They were given to idol gods, and the Greeks were given to knowledge and wisdom. And many of them considered the word of God foolish, the preaching of the cross foolish. But there were a few that believed. And I believe if we'll proclaim it, Amen. There'll still be a few that will believe, Amen. When they stop believing, when nobody will believe anymore, Jesus is going to send, I mean, uh, Christ is going to come back for his church. Amen. But uh, until he comes, we're to occupy until he comes. We're to tell others about him. So I, I hope maybe.